In the first video about experience roles, we looked at improving existing skills. In this video, we're going to look at increasing passions and learning a new skill or spell. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. Remember that experience roles are what players use within the Mithras rule set to increase their character skills, passion, passions or um, characteristics or even to learn a new skill or new spell. Experience roles are rewarded to players after a period of time adventuring and when and how many experience roles are actually rewarded is up to the GM but it is recommended that they are given and I quote at an appropriate junction in the campaign at the end of a very successful scenario or storyline or perhaps two or three sessions of play if the story is a long one which will take some time to complete. So remember experience roles are altered or adjusted by the character's charisma score whether this is low or high. Um, if it's low then there will be applied a negative modifier to the number of experience roles allocated to that character and if it's high then there will be a positive modifier um, given to that the number of experience role the character has for this reason alone charisma is definitely not a throwaway skill characteristic in Mithras now passions are a great addition to the Mithras rule set and if you're not using them because they're optional then I strongly would recommend you having a look at them and implementing them um, with your players in order to enhance your campaign. Now players can use experience roles to increase their passions in the same way as exists increasing existing skills. So basically they decide which skill they would like to improve or which passion and then they roll a 1d100 adding on their intelligence and if the result is the same or greater than their passion then the character, is, the character gains a 1d4 plus 1 percentage increase. Now sometimes they might actually want to decrease a passion and that might be because it has some kind of negative impact on them. Now if this was the case then the experience rolls would roll, would actually be rolled in exactly the same way but the 1d4 plus 1 percentage would be applied to the passion as a negative modifier. Now just so you know I really believe that myself as a GM should also have some input into characters passions and what I tend to do is have a look at the session and decide whether or not they've actually promoted their passion or gone against their passions and because of this I, I view it like I'm um, rewarding um, excellent role-playing um, opportunities. Um, if this is the key case then I don't actually ask them to roll their passion, I just roll a 1d4, add 1 and then apply it either positively or negatively to their passion and sometimes they just think wow that's getting better. Now remember passions can be used to augment skill roles. Um, another video about that coming up soon but they can be um, a great addition to any campaign. Now before we start looking at using experience roles for learning new spells and skills I would like to remind you that if you are interested in the Mithras rule set then you should definitely um, check out the new podcast Mithras Matters. The first episode included an interview with one of the co-creators of Mithras, um, Lawrence Whitaker, and it's well worth a listen even if I say so myself. Anyway, I've put the link to the podcast in the comments below. So please go along and have a look.
there will always come a time that the player wants to gain a new skill or new spell within your campaign. When this happens, the rules are slightly different for advancement and also how this actually happens might be different in every campaign. So in order to learn a new skill or spell, the character must initially spend one month doing so. Now, in order to ensure that there's opportunities to do this, I always split up my adventures so that the characters are returning to the home base, which in my campaign is the town of Lindo in southeastern Odessa. In order to meet up with their trainers to get some training or learn new spells from their brotherhoods or cults and orders. Now, because of this, the aforementioned brotherhoods, cults and orders are really important in my campaign and I will be doing a video about them next so please do um, press that bell button to get a notification when that goes live now once the um, player and the, the game master have had that conversation about where training will take place or where they will get their new skill or spell from the cost to the um, characters experience role is different from when improving a spell and in addition to this there might also be monetary cost for say the teacher or the trainer now learning a new skill or spell is not the same as training that's a different set of rules that i'll be looking at later but um, in order to keep the um, campaign more realistic, even when you're learning a new skill or spell, there might be some monetary consideration to give to your order or brotherhood. So how many experience worlds does that new skill or spell cost? Well, this differs between spells and skills. So initially for a new skill, or a new folk magic spell, it will cost the player uh, a flat three experience rolls. Okay, now for any other spell, um, whether or not that be a sorcerer spell, animist, mysticist, or whatever, it will actually cost the um, player five experience rolls. Yes, spellcasters always get it harsh, I think, but they do wield the greatest power. So as well as trying to increase their skills related to their magic, a lot of players will also be trying to save up those experience rolls in order to gain a new spell. So when the character has learned the new skill or the spell, I always tend to give them the starting value according to the character's characteristics. And I, I really uh, let the player tell me um, how they're learning it, what they're doing, what will their spell look like when it's cast for the first time. Um, and this is mainly because uh, Mithras has this wonderful ability to be adaptable. And often spells in particular can be quite, um, well, they bare bones of description, which really is positive because it allows the character or the player to really um, make that spell their own. And that's it. After a month of carrying out regular training, usually at the guild or order house, they have the new spell or skill ready to impress their players um, in the next session. So using experience rails, we covered how to improve existing skills and passions and also learning new skills and spells. Now, there are two more areas for character improvement, which are trainers and how you can use these, which are generally used um, without using experience rails and also improving characteristics. But before we get on to those, um, I would like to have a look at the role of orders and guilds in campaigns. So if you are interested in seeing that, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to press that bell button so you'll get a notification as soon as the next video comes live. Now, don't forget this episode two of the Mithras Matters podcast goes live on the 1st of June. So do go to the links below and make sure you subscribe um, to the podcast. Ow, just hit my hand. Until then, 
please, if you have any ideas about what you would like me to do future videos on, then please do add them in the comments below and let me know, are there any um, great ways that you encourage your players to develop their characters when they're gaining new skills or new spells? So until next time, please enjoy playing and I hope that all your experience rolls are above your current score and you get the maximum improvement score. Until then, have fun guys and I'll catch you all later. And until then, happy Mithrasing. See ya. Bye.